Agua Dulce y Amor, here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're on the road in Washington, D.C. I am Amy Goodman. As we turn to a part of the world few Americans know about, I'm talking about the Western Sahara, a disputed territory in North Africa bordering Morocco, Mauritania and Algeria. Formerly controlled by Spain, Morocco has occupied most of the territory since 1975, just when the Western Sahara was gaining its independence from Spain. In October, a Western Saharan human rights activist named Aminatou Haidar was in New York to receive the 2009 Civil Courage Prize for her nonviolent resistance to the Moroccan occupation of Zaharawi land. She's often called the Zaharawi Gandhi. When she returned home a few weeks later, she was arrested by Moroccan officials. They seized her Moroccan passport and expelled her against her will to an airport on Spain's Canary Islands. Moroccan authorities say she was deported because she refused to sign a paper saying she was a Moroccan citizen and declared Western Sahara as her country of origin on the immigration entry form. Aminatou Haidar began a hunger strike inside Lanzarote Airport in the Canary Islands over two weeks ago. She demands she will that she be allowed to return to her home in the Western Sahara. But she remains in the airport, surrounded by supporters, her health deteriorating. Aminatou's supporters include the Robert F. Kennedy Center for Justice and Human Rights, which honored her last year, and Spanish celebrities like film director, uh, film director Pedro Almodovar and actors Javier Bardem and Guillermo Willy Toledo. We're joined now by three guests. Yes, the actor Spanish, the actor Willy Toledo is with us on the line from inside the Lanzarote airport in the Spanish controlled Canary Islands. He is next to Amanatu Haidar, who remains on hunger strike. He hasn't left her side. Here in Washington, D.C., I'm joined by Maloud Said. He's the Washington, D.C. representative of the Polisario, the Sahrawi independence movement. And from Mountain View, California. We're joined by University of San Francisco professor Stephen Zunas, the author, along with Jacob Mundy, of the forthcoming book Western Sahara, Nationalism, Conflict and International Accountability. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! I want to first go to Stephen Zunas, just for an American audience, uh, in addition to people around the world, explain exactly what this conflict is before we go to the Canary Islands, where the human rights activist um, is right now in her third week of a hunger strike. What we're looking at is a situation quite comparable to East Timor, in that it was a late decolonizing, relatively small colony that was invaded and gobbled up by a powerful neighbor in violation of the most basic principles of the United Nations Charter and International Law, but because the powerful neighbor happened to have powerful friends, in this case, uh, United States and Morocco, a whole series of U.N. Security Council resolutions uh, calling for an end of the occupation and the right of self-determination have been ignored. And the people of Western Sahara uh, initially took up arms to, to fight the Moroccans, uh, but agreed to a ceasefire in 1991 in return for Moroccan promises of a referendum to determine the fate of the territory. But the Moroccans continually blocked that referendum from going forward. And more recently, uh, the independent struggle has turned to a, a nonviolent uh, struggle, a, 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 what they call an intifada for, for independence, uh, of, of which Aminatou Haidar is the most significant leader. Mm. Maloud Saeed, um, you're here in Washington, D.C. Talk about um, where you see this struggle going and the significance of an Aminatou's hunger strike right now, what it means. Good morning, Amy, and thank you very much for paying attention to this extremely sad situation. It's really sad what's happening. It's extremely sad that this happens in the 21st century, where all of us were so hopeful after listening to President Obama at the United Nations last September, when he expressed his commitment to the human rights and his commitment to the right of to every people, the right to self-determination. This is a clear case now for the U.S. administration and the U.S. president to show his commitment. This is the first time ever where an occupying power, where we had experiences in the past in Namibia when it was occupied by South Africa, by the racist regime of South Africa, 
we had the experience with Indonesia when they occupy East Timor. Never, ever a human rights activist was expelled from his own or her own territory. This is a clear violation of the International Convenant on Civil and Political Rights, which Morocco, co -signed, Morocco signed in 1979. Now, the situation is extremely, is extremely volatile. This, we have a woman with her life is in a limbo. For the only reason that she wants to be with her family, she has two children, they are teenagers, she's in her 42 years old, she's 42 years old. She already has experienced jail, disappearance and torture in the Morocco for many years. She was blindfolded for four years in a Moroccan jail where she was given for disappear. And her only crime is to claim her right to the free expression, the right of the people of Western Sahara to have a day where they can choose their destiny. And just because of her international recognition and the, all the awards that you just mentioned, Amy, the Moroccans, they believe that this is a threat to their occupation, and therefore they decided to expel her to Spain. Both Morocco and Spain are responsible of this situation. First of all, Morocco for violating the International Convenant on Civil and Political Rights. And secondly, Spain for allowing Morocco to violate this international covenant and accepting Aminet to in Spain against her own will. I want to go Therefore, right now. We call to, on the international community. Yes. I, I want to go right now uh, yes, sure. to the Canary Islands, to Lanzarote Airport, um, where the famous Spanish actor Guillermo Toledo, Willy Toledo, is, who has been with Amanatu now for three weeks. Uh, Willy Toledo, welcome to Democracy Now. Can you explain exactly where you are, uh, why you're there, and the condition right now of Amanatu Haidar? Hello, good afternoon, and thank you very much for the interest in this case. Well, we are here in the Lanzarote Airport in the Canary Islands for this is the third week of hunger strike of Aminetu Haidar. I, uh, me, and many other people who are around Aminetu trying to um, to give her message uh, to all all over the world. We're here because um, we are really fed up of our government, which is supposed to be a democratic uh, government, who is um, traveling around the world speaking about human rights and democracy and uh, and uh, civilizations alliance and all that kind of uh, empty words. And uh, they show now that they were all empty words because uh, uh, we don't understand how a democratic part uh, uh, country as Spain is on the side of a country like Morocco torturing, disappearing people, uh, getting people into secret jails for years and years. I have to remember, I mean, I were in a secret jail for four years. She already uh, passed through a 45 days hunger strike. And, uh, and because we don't understand how our government is on the side of Morocco, which is a, a country that ignores any, any human rights. And uh, we are just fed up of all that situation, mostly because uh, Western Sahara used to be a Spanish part of the Span of the Spanish uh, state in back in 1975, and uh, the Spanish government, one after the other one since 1975, have been betraying the Sahrawi people who trust us to help them to to get to um, to their independence, which. Uh, the, I have to say that there is no one single country around the world who recognizes Western Sahara as part of the Moroccan country, not even the United Nations. There are hundreds, uh, dozens of resolutions of the United Nations saying um, and willing for a, for a referendum for the freedom of the Sahrawi people. So we are now with Aminitu and here in the airport since uh, 15, uh, 16, years ago, uh, 16 days ago. Aminatu, her condition, uh, is there any chance she could come on the phone, Willie Toledo? No, we tried. Today, the, the last uh, past two days, she's uh, been very, very bad. Her situation is turned very critical. She can barely speak. She can uh, no more walk. We have to tra uh, transport her in a wheelchair. And she is sleeping in a very dirty and, and unhuman hole here in the airport. Uh, and she haven't tried no food since uh, 17, 16 days now. 
and she she was uh, she would like to say to all to you thank you very much for your interest and uh, she knew that she could trust many people in the United States of America who are fighting for democracy and for freedom around the world.